Welcome to Tottenham. Welcome back to the Premier League. Great to have you back. Thank you. Thanks so much. You said in the summer that in your first news conference in your new job, you'd be smiling, and you, you certainly are. I'm smiling for two days. Um, good afternoon. Uh, first of all, I think I have two, and I do it. Um, I do it with a bit of, of sadness, but um, I have to do it. I have to speak about um, Mauricio. I have to congratulate him for the work he did, and I had. I have to share with you what um, we already share indoors, which is uh, this club will be always his, uh, his home. This training ground will be always his training ground. He can come when he wants, when he misses the players, when he miss the people that he work with. The door is always open for, uh, for him. And um, from my experience, um, tomorrow is another day and you will find happiness again. You will find a, a great club again and you will have a great, a great future. It would be in modern days very bad news if this is the last time he loses his job because that's our life. Uh, the point is we give everything every day like he did at the club and to live obviously with a, with a sad feeling but to live with a, with the feeling that he did the great work so I would like just to to, to say that because is what everybody at the club feels uh, about it. You will be always uh, welcome. In relation to your um, to your question, I'm a bit disappointed that you are happy that I'm here because I thought you'd like to keep me at Sky. <laughs> but that's okay. Uh, we are friends and you know um, very, very well that I enjoy. I enjoy what I did, but this is my life and this is where I belong and this is uh, what really me makes me happy. So yes, I'm not smiling as much today because uh, I have a game in, in two days and uh, not long time to work. But deep inside, I'm I'm really really happy, and every minute I spend in the club, I realize that my option was correct. I'm really enjoying a, a big football club with a big structure, with um, a great organization, where uh, I'm really really more focused on on my job, on my coaching, on my players, on my team, and uh, not worried at all with everything that surrounds me. And because it's not about the wonderful structure that we have, it's also about uh, the dynamic of the structure. And um, fantastic, really amazing. I'm, I'm more than happy to, to, to be here. On a scale of 1 to 10, Jose, uh, where would you put that happiness? And also on a scale of 1 to 10, uh, how difficult a job will it be to just take Spurs that extra step to win trophies? Happiness-wise, and convincement that my choice was a great one, a ten. I couldn't be, I couldn't be happier. Um, in relation to the difficulty of the job, every time a club uh, changes at mid-season, is because the situation is not good. Um, that's obvious. Uh, unless something strange happened that we don't know outside, basically the results sometimes make these decisions and uh, of course it's not easy but um, if I forget, I can't forget, but if I forget that uh, in two days I have a match, if I forget that in four days I have another match and that we need uh, results and that we have objectives, if I can forget that, I wouldn't say a great job because the potential of the club is huge, the potential of the players is great. I'm so happy. It was one of the reasons why I came was because the vision that Mr. Levy uh, put in front of me about his, his, his club and the quality of the players, the quality of the squad were the main reasons why I decided to come. So I know that 
I have potentially a great job in, in my hands. That's not easy because I need to be, I need to be balanced. I, I, I cannot think that I can come and in two days uh, or four days to change things. Um, I don't have a great experience of, of getting teams in mid-season. It's only the second time I, I, I do it. I did it in, in Porto in, um, I think, 2001. And, um, but I thought about it during these months because I had obviously the feeling that I'm going to get a, a club, a team mid-season. So I thought about it a lot and um, the conclusion was I'm going to have always a game two days after my appointment or three days after. I need to go through stability. I need to trust the base and the base is the work that was done before. And um, they were in hands of a good manager, they were in hands of a good coaching staff. Of course, we have always uh, principles of play, we have always principles in our leadership style that are going to change, that's obvious. But I cannot come here and think that uh, it's about my fingerprint, it's about myself, it's not about myself, it's about the players. And to try to go from a base of, um, of stability. So very, very careful about the selection of, uh, of the information, about the selection of the training exercises, a good control of the intensity of the density of, of the training sessions, uh, to try to go from a, a base of, uh, of some comfort to the, uh, to the boys. So it's not easy, but uh, let's go for it. You said that you are thinking a lot in the summer, when you're 11 months out. I know you've been studying, keeping up to date with your documentation, keeping an eye on football changes, other sports as well. I think you quoted Darwin at one point about adapting. Despite all you've won, do you think you're now a, a new improved, Jose? I think so. I believe so. I have to believe so. I, I always thought that these uh, 11 months were not uh, a waste of time. These 11 months were... Uh, uh, months to to think, to analyze, to rethink, to prepare, uh, to anticipate things, and um, I think so. I think uh, you never lose your uh, your DNA. You never lose your identity. You are what you are for the good things, for the bad things. But I had time to think about many things. Uh, don't ask me. Don't ask me uh, what uh, are the mistakes. But I realized that during my career. I also made mistakes and I'm not going to make the same mistakes. I'm going to make new mistakes, uh, not the same mistakes. So I had time. I think I'm, I'm stronger. Um, and when I say I'm stronger, I'm not saying I'm fitter. I was always fit. Um, but I think I'm stronger by the, the, the emotional point of view. I'm, I'm relaxed. I'm motivated. Uh, I'm ready. And I think, uh, I think the players, they, f they felt that in two days. I think they felt that, uh, that I'm ready. I'm ready to, to support them. This is not about me. I think uh, in your career, you go through moments, not just in your career, I think also in our lives, you go through moments and uh, through periods. And I am in a period where um, it's not about myself at all. It's about my club, it's about... My club fans is about my players. It's not about me. I'm just I'm just here to try to to help everyone. Absolutely. Josie, you, ju you just said don't ask you what your mistakes were, but what would you say the key thing you've learned about yourself in the last year and this break from management has been, and what do you intend to do differently this time? I I am I am humble. I am humble enough to to try to, to analyze, which was what I did, to try to analyze my career, not just the last year, but to analyze my career, the evolution, the problems, the solutions. I was humble enough uh, for that. Um, the principle of the analyze was not to blame anyone else. Um, and when I had meetings with my, my assistants and uh, the people that I thought about bringing to, to work with me in this, in this chapter, 
was always based on the principle there is nobody else to, to blame, there is nobody else to analyze, it's just only about us. And that was, was a great thing because I went really, I went really deep in that, in that, uh, in that analyze and was, was very important for me. And uh, I'm nobody to advise, to advise people, but sometimes to have a, a break uh, looked very, very positive for me. Uh, I can say that because it was the first summer that I didn't work was was not easy. I felt a little bit a bit a little bit lost during that preseason period. But before that and uh, and after that was a, a learning process. I even learned how to be a pundit. <laughs> <laughs> Yesterday you promised passion and happiness. You've mentioned the word happiness a fair few times already today. Happiness was not something we saw a lot of uh, from you it, towards the end at United. Do you feel like you've got your mojo back? I have to go to Google Translator to understand what mojo is. <laughs> um, but I, I can more or less feel what, what, you, what you mean. Um, when I don't win, I cannot be happy. And I cannot change that in my, in my DNA. And I hope I can influence the players of not be happy without winning football matches. Um, if you are happy by losing football matches, it's difficult to be a winner in any moment of, uh, of your career. That's, that's a basic principle. But the emotional control, the, to keep the self-esteem, to keep confidence in in yourself, to show confidence to the others, to keep confidence in the in the in the other ones that work with you and around you, I think this is a very a very very important uh, a principle. And another thing that I also have to to learn, but the people that works with me they have also to learn, is that sometimes you have to work with people that you don't love. And work well. And the other thing is that um, people that works for you and with you, they have also to learn how to share your principles. And I have principles that I will keep for the rest of of my career, and that I cannot I cannot change. And one of these principles is um, I don't like to lose. Just finally, for me, um, Spurs fans know you as Mr. Chelsea. What are you going to do? What do you need to do to get them on side and win them over? No, I think they have to see me as Mr. Inter, uh, Mr. Real Madrid, Mr. Porto. I think they have to see me as Mr. Club, which means every club that I go, as I used to say in a funny way, I arrive, I wear the pyjama of the club and I even sleep with the pyjama. Uh, I work and I sleep you know, tracksuit, pyjama, you confuse the tracksuit with the pyjama. So that's the way I am. I am a club man, but many clubs man. I decided in, in, in my career to have this adventure. It goes through different countries uh, until I, I did it, what I call the Grand Slam. Uh, Italy, Spain, and and uh, and um, England, England, Spain, and Italy. I I didn't stop. I wanted to do it, and I did it with with this passion. Then, of course, uh, the Premier League is what I always told is my natural habitat. Is where I most loved. Is is where I feel that if I have the options, I always told that is the um, the football country and the football league that. Uh, I consider the best, the most enjoyable, and where I really I'm happy. So, when you decide to stay more years in the same country, in modern football, um, I think Mr. Wenger was probably the last of uh, of that um, of that generation of of a big era in the football club. Sir Alex, then uh, Mr. Wenger, Mauricio, five and a half, five and a half years is amazing, is really amazing. So it's normal that you change, you change from club to club. I wouldn't be surprised if tomorrow Mauricio is uh, the manager of another English club.
and this is modernity in uh, in football and people have has to look for that and um uh, if i play against one of my previous clubs which i, I will at least chelsea and and manchester united but hopefully hopefully um, uh, inter or real madrid in the champions league porto no because they are in, in the europa league this season but if i play against one of my teams which i did many many times you know i have only one shirt i have only one one passion i have only one thing in my mind which is my my clubs and now is uh, is um, is spurs i won the champions league with porto and three months later i was playing against porto and that's just life and that's the way the way it is so i'm not chelsea i'm not united i'm not real madrid i'm not inter i am all of them i give everything to all of them and that's what i'm going to do here is to give absolutely everything i have jose welcome back to london thank you um 15 years ago when i interviewed you so i'm going to meet you every time after the game yeah is that, that, is that, is that okay <laughs> in cold tunnels after the game, freezing. You are going to be there all the time, man. <laughs> Life could be worse? Could be worse. You are a good guy. You are one of the good ones. <laughs> 15 years ago when I met you, we both had less grey hair. You said you were the special one. I'm not looking for a, a, a label. But you say today you're really humble. But that brashness you had 15 years ago is what made you the greatest manager. Are you worried that if you're going to be humble, maybe you'll lose some of that? No. I was always humble. The problem is that you didn't understand that. <laughs> I was always humble in in my way, in my way. So no problem with um, no problem with that. And some of the problems you will encounter here: players that are running running out of contract, like <coughs> out of their old of Vertonghen and Eriksson, and no away wins since January. How are you going to put all that right? And can you keep the players that want to leave? It's too early. Early days. Second day. I had no time for uh, individual individual cases. I don't know how um, I can influence or try to influence. I didn't have time. Mr. Levy didn't have time uh, to to go around this. The first thing I think it is the players to feel good, and if they are going to leave in January if they are going to leave in June, if they are going to sign a new contract. I think everything has to be based on feeling good. And feel good is to, is to be ready for Saturday, to be there, available for the team, which uh, Jan cannot do because of, of, of injuries, but to be ready for the team. Then it's about the club, it's about them, it's about me, it's about Mr. Levy. But fundamentally, it's about the players to be, to be happy. You have to be happy. You have to choose what makes you, what makes you happy. So let's let's see. But in this moment, uh, let's go on on the short term. And the short term is we have to try to get two results in the next two matches, because it's important in the Premier League. We have to to disappear from that area where we don't belong. And in the Champions League, we have two matches to qualify, but if you can qualify after the first match, which will be my first match at home, would be better. Boa tarde, Zé Mourinho. Vou ter de fazer a pergunta em inglês, mas não queria deixar de desejar boa sorte em, em português. Obrigado. Uh, is Tottenham the biggest challenge you, have, you had in your career because of the need of the, of the club to, win, uh, to start winning titles? And because of the big expectations that everyone have on you of your come come back. Every I, I see every challenge with the same responsibility. I, I cannot I cannot answer to you in a very objective way. Is my challenge in this moment. But I don't even feel it as I was saying before that this is about me. I, I understand that uh, people will look at me about about myself, I understand that when a top player goes to some club, uh, people try to focus on him and on his success. I don't think it's about the player and the player's success, it's about the team's success. I think this is globality, that's the way I see it, is a club situation, is a club vision, is a club 
objectives is not uh, Mourinho vision or Mourinho objectives is 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 about us. So I don't feel it this uh, I don't feel it this way, and it's already almost two decades of of big clubs, of big challenges, of big uh, of big expectations. Uh, I think I am guilty of it because with my career I create so many expectations in the people. I think it's also in this case Spurs' uh, fault because in the last years the club grew up in such a direction where people is uh, is waiting even for better days. So we have to go together and stick together and and think just about the good things that we can do. I would uh, ask. I'll ask. I'll, I would last to ask if you um, have already a Christmas list to the next transfer market and if Bruno Fernandes is in it. Christmas list uh, for the transfer ma transfer market. Uh, Players. <laughs> I'm thinking about gifts I have to give to the people I love and that is always a problem because I always like to give the best the best gifts I always try to be very analytical and try to understand what people would love as a gift um, players the best gift is the ones that are here I don't I don't need players I don't need players I'm so happy with the players I have I just need time to understand them better to know everything about them because I always say, you only know a player when you work with them. Um, of course, how many times I watch these guys, how many times I play against them. Uh, I know them well, but you never know them well enough until you work with them. And my gift is this squad. The squad is very, very good. Mauricio, it was a very sudden turn of events. Could you tell us how you felt when you woke up in the morning and you were Tottenham's manager. This morning I woke up in, in here in the training ground. I, I stayed, we worked yesterday until very, very late. And um, we all stayed in the, in the lodge. And um, if we were trying to find a six-star hotel, we couldn't find better than, than in here. Absolutely amazing. Great beds, huge pillows, <laughs> um, pff, huge pillows, amazing. You sleep in the middle of five or six huge soft pillows, very, very good. Expensive dovet, <laughs> expensive dovet, so, so good. Um, so this morning I woke up with all my guys, seven o'clock and start working. So that's, that's what I want. Um, Really, really happy. So, it was a big shock for the players, and now they're with one of the most successful managers in history. What did you say to them, and how much did you have to think about that moment? How I, did it? I all told them exactly what I'm telling you. I told them that uh, one of the reasons why I decided to come was them. Was them. Uh, I tried to buy some of them for different clubs. I couldn't. Um, some of them I didn't even try because you know how impossible it is. But I like this squad very, very much. I like the players very, very much. It's not something new that I, I say that. It's not like, okay, now you are their manager, you are telling that because you want to, to look nice. For them, that's not the point. I told that two, three, four years ago. Um, so I'm really, really happy. Right? You know, Luis. Oh, come yeah. on, don't Hello. let him ask questions. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Why? Everyone talks about that. No, this, this, oh, come on, it's very difficult. You, you will come with a, with a, fi yeah. a philosophy, philosophy. Oh, no, no, no philosopher, no. Oh. <laughs> no, it's as simple as that. One question then. No, two, two. You will see. You will yeah, see. No, two. In terms of football, oh. in which area do you have to improve the Pochettino's team now? I mean, how are you going to be your first changes in the team? I don't want to make big changes. As I was saying before, I want to respect the base 
And the base is the work they did for five and a half years. It's not the work they did for two days. The work they did for two days is, we hope that it is a plus, that it is an update, is not a change. The base is, is what they did before. This is not about me. This is not about me coming here and say everything was wrong with, with Mauricio. Not at all. Not at all. I just come to try to understand why in the last year the results in the Premier League were not good and to try to, to, to understand how I can help them to, to reach again a good level. Because as I was saying, the, the players are very good and I'm not here to make uh, dramatic changes. I'm just here to, to follow a process, to have my ideas in a progressive way don't losing stability, you know, don't create confusion in, in their brains, you know, in football you have to express yourself, you cannot be confused. So I'm going to be very, very careful in relation to that. You are a, let us say, serial winner. Do you think no winning the final in the Champions League pay at all in the squad of Mauricio Pochettino? I don't know because I never lost a Champions League final, but I can imagine it's not easy. You know, you reach, you reach uh, one of the biggest moments in that you can achieve in in football. You are one step away from it. You cannot do it. I can imagine that is not easy, but you have the example of Liverpool. That one one year they. They lost the Premier League by one point and they lost the Champions League by one goal. And the next season, which is the current season, they are very strong in the, in the, um, in the Premier League. And last season, which is the, the season after they lost the, the Champions League final, they went very, very strong and they win it. So I don't think there is something that we can say there is a rule. Depend on the way on the way people uh, react to it. Um, and of course, I don't want to go as deep as that because that, that is their history in, in the club. I don't want to go as deep as that. Okay, guys, I'm conscious there's a lot of people that do still want to ask questions. Can we limit it to one question each now, please? So we'll start with this gentleman here, but it is one each, okay? Thank you. Hello, Mr. Mourinho, Tiago Pérez Costa from Sport TV Portugal. <laughs> Uh, first of all, best wishes uh, you. for you. Obrigado. In terms of uh, style of play, what kind of game we will see Tottenham playing? Very similar to before. That's what I, that's what I keep saying. Very similar to, to before. Of course, I'm going to try to add some details, and sometimes details they can make the, they can make the difference. And progressively, we will arrive, obviously, to, to a fingerprint. But um, the style of play has to be always adapted, not just to the club culture, but especially to the players' qualities. And um, that's the way it is. So these are the players. They have their qualities adapted to a certain way of, of playing football. And that's the way we want to do it. You said a little earlier um, that sometimes you have to work with people you don't love and you have to make it work. Is that the biggest lesson you learned at United? It's one of the lessons, if you, can, if you want to call it a lesson. For me, it's just experiences. Experiences and accumulation of experiences. Is, for me, it's just about that. Um, you have to learn with your experience, you, especially when you have time to analyze everything at detail. I think it's a very important thing, but I cannot say it's a lesson because, because um, um, again, I go back to my answer before. This is also about principles. And uh, if people share principles, I read one quote, uh, a, little, a little work about Kobe Bryant. And if we have to speak about some example of, of professionalism and, and serial winner, Kobe is 
a great example in his in his uh, sport in the world of sport where he says people say that I'm difficult but I'm only difficult for the ones that don't share my principles so all the all the colleagues that share his principles they just love him the ones that don't like him are the ones that don't share the principles and with me is is basically the same for me everything is about is about the team it's not about selfish people for me everything is about is about uh, the group and uh, professionalism and commitment and respect for the club and respect for the mates respect for the fans i cannot run away from from this so if if there is somebody that doesn't share these principles with me then we have a problem and we will always have a problem because this is the way i think uh, football has to be and the players are only big when they make the others better you cannot be a big player if you just think about yourself that's another principle to be a big player you have to make other better if i have players that they think they are big and they just care about themselves and they forget to help others to be big we are always going to have a problem okay amy we just can do one, two, james three, four, five. okay and that will be the end to so, amy if you start thank you Jose, four years ago when you were at Chelsea, you were asked if you would ever come to Spurs and you said, never, I love the Chelsea fans too much. What's changed? Yeah, before I was sacked. <laughs> <laughs> How do you think the fans will respond to you, Chelsea fans, <laughs> next month? <laughs> you know, um, that's modern football. You know, when when my father was a player and before the Bosman law the players used to play 20 years in the same club every day with the same with the same player next to him the same guy on the right side in the dressing room the same center back in front of the keeper for for 15 years for 20 years in this moment in relation to players after Bosman law everything changed in relation to us coaches because in some part because of you we lost that stability there is lots of pressure even for the nature of uh, of society now it looks like everything is fast even the relationships are fast um, is uh, players can get tired of each other they can get tired of the manager. It's, everything looks like it's, it's faster. So we need to change. So when I went to Manchester United, we are not even speaking about, about uh, Tottenham Hotspur. When I went to Manchester United, if I stay in England only for Chelsea, I will have to be waiting for a third opportunity. Uh, probably third opportunity, another Premier League because every time I go there, I win the Premier League. But that's not the point. So I went to Manchester United with a free mind, with a free heart. Manchester United occupied my heart, even with things that I didn't enjoy too much, but I loved so much of the Manchester United uh, uh, things, the fans, the people that work in the club. I, I just love it. And now, it's about Spurs, and I just hope that uh, I can be really, really happy here, make people happy, and there is not a bigger, a bigger, f let's say, fan than myself. If somebody in the world wants a Spurs to win, wants Spurs to be successful, there is not one person that wants more than me. So Probably the same, but not as, not much, not more than me. So Chelsea is past, great past, you know, two periods, two periods of titles, great past, past but it's past.
So you're basically Amy, saying sorry, I've got, I have got. I know it's, it is one question per person because I'm conscious there are a lot of people. In Good the afternoon. Room. My name is Miguel Cardoso Pereira from the newspaper of Olhos de Amorim. Muito especial de você passar por aqui. Obrigado, obrigado. Obrigado. The last time you took a, a job in the middle of a season, which was in Porto nearly 20 years ago, uh, I remember you saying that uh, you could not win the league that year, but that you would definitely win the league the following year, which you did, and, it, and that was uh, pretty much the beginning of your international career. Uh, in respect to Tottenham's motto, which is uh, written outside, to dare is to do. Uh, would you dare to say that again, that you will win the Premier League the following year? We the cannot year? win the Premier League this season. We can. I'm not saying we will do. We can win next season. James, do you want to put your hand up? I know you asked your question. Stop grabbing the microphone from behind you. Thank you. Hello, Jose. Hey. Uh, how excited are you to, to work with this group of players? These are players you've seen on, on television and, and superficially at least for a while, but how excited are you to get to know them more deeply? Yeah, it's one of the reasons I come. Everything started with the Mr. Levy vision for the club that he shared with, uh, with me in a very, very specific way uh, that impressed me. But, you know, I wouldn't come to a club where, uh, with the big, you know, I don't know the word in English, with the big decalage, French, I don't know, uh, between what I, I think is a good level of players and the level of the team. I think they have, we have a very good squad, we have good young players coming. I don't know in detail but is is an academy that normally produces good uh, good talents as i always say there is not one manager in the world that doesn't like to play and to help young players to develop the problem is that some of them they they have the young players to bring them and some they don't um, i was lucky i was lucky uh, to have scott mctominay as a kid rafael varan as a kid uh, Balotelli, as a kid, I, I was lucky to have talents in the majority of the clubs where uh, I've been. So, if Tottenham is a great academy that produces great players, is also something. It's also something nice. Okay, the last two questions. Ciao José, Filippo Benicampi, Sky Sport Italia. Ciao. Lo sai che hai tantissimi fan in Italia, quindi se Grazie puoi mille. Eh, Ciao. rispondere in italiano <coughs> sarebbe fantastico. I can't, uh, yeah. I can't answer in Italian. He's got a lot no, of fans in Italy, so... Uh, so if I speak Italians in Italian, the Portuguese anyway. guy will okay. start crying. Just do it, keep it in English. My question is, uh, you helped Chelsea win the first Premier League title in 50 years, Inter Milan the first Champions League title in 45 years. And uh, everybody knows in Italy you don't like ending up, ending up seasons with zero titoli, no titles. Do you think this is one of the biggest challenge in your career, helping Tottenham winning trophies again? Thanks. I think we'll, if we win titles, will be the consequence, not of me, but the consequence of the club work. And this is a package. This is a vision. Everything starts with a vision. And, um, you know, the stadium is part of the vision. The training ground is part of the vision. The academy is part of the vision. To keep, to try to keep all the best players and to refuse to let the best players uh, go away is part of the vision too. Um, maybe to have uh, a manager with my experience is also part of the vision. I think this is about, is about the vision and if we win a title, it doesn't matter when, uh, my contract is three and a half years, if we, if we win a title during my, my period, will not, because of, will not be because of myself. It's, it's just the natural consequence of, um, of a vision and, and a plan. Okay. Last question is just here. Hola José, eh, Diego Plaza para el chiringuito. Suerte, gracias. Mucha suerte en Muchas su gracias. nueva etapa. In Spain, eh, some people missing you, and eh, you spoke about your other clubs. Eh, did you speak with eh, Real Madrid in the last 
10 months or before to sign here? If you want to call my friends at Real Madrid, Real Madrid, yeah, I speak with them many, many times. I have so many friends there. The president is the first one. He loves me, I love him. We are friends. We speak, we change uh, an SMS, we wish luck, we... Merry Christmas, happy birthday, good luck for the game. Um, I have friends. I loved my period there, as you, as you know, we did amazing things in there. We had our problems, we had our frustrations, but it was an amazing period for me. I feel always very flattered when I, I leave this, these things behind me, which go above success, above football. Is is about the human being, is about the relations. I received 50 messages yesterday from Manchester United people. Some players, some staff, some staff over the different areas of of um, of the club, the board, I everybody. And that for me means means the world. It's not about winning, not winning, it's about the respect that people has for you. Because you were a good professional, because you were a good, a good a good person, because you create empathies. So Real Madrid is part of my life, a good part of my life, and I always wish them a good. I always I'm always happy when Real Madrid goes in the in the right direction, and uh, you know a part of if we play them in Champions League, a part of that match. I I just want Real Madrid to 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 win and to be successful.